Hello, my name is Amber Chatham, and this is my presentation for the 504 class for different types of technology that we use in the classroom. I chose to use MobyMax because it's an excellent tool that we use at my school that helps to support student learning in the classroom. It is something that can be done synchronously or asynchronously. So let's get started. MobyMax first starts with pinpoint assessments. It has two different types, benchmark or placement tests, and skill checkers. The benchmarker tests will let you know how students are progressing over time. They predict how your students will do on those end of year state tests. It gives you a pretty accurate prediction. We actually used it last year and this year, so we were able to actually see what MobyMax was projecting for the students to score on the test, and then we got those state test scores at the end of the year, and they actually, many of them were very, very close to each other, so it was very accurate in its projections. The recommendation is that you give the benchmarkers quarterly. We use um, a different tool to do like middle of semester checks and we use our benchmarkers beginning middle and end of years for them we use the skill checkers in between which we'll talk about that in just a second you can use it whichever way you think is most beneficial for you and your students and you can give it as many times as you need to the skill checkers are used for remediation you can assess a student's skills really quickly in like 10 minutes or less what we do is we take the benchmarker and placement tests we see the standards where the students are scoring lower and we use that information to create our lessons and our small groups that you might kind of think about when you pull it to the teacher table kind of things. We are virtual, so it's a little bit different. But then we focus on those specific skills. They've already taken that benchmarker, so when we finish whatever amount of lessons, unit, classes we're going to do on that, we give them the skill checker again. And the skill checker is just specific skill. Instead of everything like the benchmarkers and placements are, it's you choose which standard you want them to be checked on. So it's a very good formative data tool. And what we'll often do is we will include qu a few questions from the standard that or the skill that we're going to be moving to next. So we have it kind of like a pre-assessment, a post-assessment for one set of skills, a pre-assessment for the other, and it's still typically like five or ten minutes, just so you can kind of see a quick snapshot of how they're doing. Always, you go to the teacher dashboard, you can see how much time they spent taking it, how much time they spent on each problem, and it gives you their overall percentage. Then you can even go further and say, okay, well, they didn't do as well, so I'm going to click that standard. As you see over here, there's a list, and then click that remediate skill button. And you can do it by skill or by standard. We usually do it by the standard. One way that MobyMax can help you before we even get started looking at the academic part of it is with motivation and engagement. We are virtual completely 100%, so that can sometimes be a problem for us, and MobyMax has really helped because they have a variety of tools that we can use that are extrinsic motivators for those students to help them want to come to class, want to work, and want to do well. And the cool thing is, if you're consistent with it, you'll see that growth coming from your students and that engagement happening. And the teachers, that's a new thing that they added last year, get rewards as well. This year they've added where the teachers actually get like um, Amazon gift cards. I have one teacher who has done so well with getting her students in and their scores that and then their scores coming up from how they're working in the program, she's already gotten like $250 in Amazon gift cards. So it's really cool. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that one, but you can create contests for the students to compete against themselves, against their classmates, and class to class as well. So you do that from your teacher dashboard, and when you see the modules, you go to contests. It's under the student motivation section. They also offer badges, so you can set the badges yourself and create your own, and then, or you can let MobyMax auto assign. The auto assign is going to be that if they score 80% consistently on a skill, they get to collect the badges. The badges can be turned in for them to earn extra points in games, or they can earn certificates that you can actually turn into. Okay, if you, what my teachers do, is okay if you have these badges. Now you get. Um, this prize from me, that sort of thing. 
it's really neat to look into. And again, you can adjust that all from your teacher dashboard. So looking in the academic side of things, MobyMax offers practice in a variety of educational modules. Pretty much any subject you might cover in the K through five group um, is on there. It does do skills up to eighth grade though. So there are some other areas that are on there with social studies and sciences and things like that. At our school, we primarily use them for math and ELA subjects. So MobyMax Math, when they first log in, automatically gives them a placement test. It will find and focus on the skills that they're missing through the curriculum from kindergarten up to wherever you assign it to. Now, they you may find that they have second grade, they're missing a whole bunch of skills. This is a fourth grade student, though, so we want to see if they know any of the third and fourth grade ones, so it'll continue through. The one thing that it does do is take into consideration frustration level. So even if we've assigned it to fourth grade, if they start to miss too many questions, it will stop because it does not want to get them frustrated. And if there are too many missing, we really need to focus on those remedial ones anyways. So that's what it pulls in the report for you. But it does tell you that as well. It's formatted like a game. So very quickly when they first come on the little uh, fox sometimes it's a different animal depending on the grade of the students does a little dance and gets you know says they're gonna do it but that's really quickly it does not tell them at any other time during the assessment that it is an assessment and it, the questions are provided like a game where you have a question or practice and you're moving through either a game board or some sort of a game mode and they do get points to play the other games when they're finished Throughout the test, if they get distracted, if it notices that they're sitting a really long time on a question and not answering, it lets them take a little break and gives them something fun to do or some little joke or little video to watch and then brings them back to it. You can always go back in and assign additional grade level practice, extension practice, and even remedial skills. And those tests and all the subjects are adaptive to how the students are scoring. When you're looking at your placement test report, these, don't worry, are not real students, That's, um, at least not intentionally. It was just for the purpose of showing this information to you, so there's no violations here. Um, it gives you their overall grade level, but notice that that grade level is blue, where the other, all the other information is, is in black. That's because when you click on it, it opens up to other menus that shows you exactly where they are on each of those standards in the subject areas and in the standards for the grade level. By examining those scores, you can see exactly what needs to be taught to them that's going to build their skills and then eventually get them to mastery. So notice that student was at a 5.1, but we notice that when we're looking through the, the different um, domains for each grade level that they have some kindergarten geometry skills. Oh, I don't think you guys can see that. Let me pull this down. Where they scored a 0%. So it will start them automatically it starts where their lowest is with practice in that area even though they scored overall in the correct grade band it did show that they had some deficits that needed addressing so once it gives the auto assigned of the lessons it's going to start with wherever the furthest one back is you can change that by going to sequence lessons from your teacher dashboard you click into the module for math and then you can click on sequence lessons and it's a simple this this little dashy line with the up and down arrows if you click it you can drag and move them in a different order if you want to you can also choose to assign the lessons um, and pick your own now it is adaptive just like the test is um, it's adaptive in every subject area if the students show a need for remediation in a skill they'll they'll get a new set it is the same skill but it's new problems and then it gives them a second set and even a third before and then it will send you an alert that they might need some teacher intervention and some help. On the reports, you can actually see all of that. It tells you, see how there's multiple scores, how many times they took that, how many lessons they completed, how many questions that they answered, and you can even click into the lesson that they worked on and actually see the questions that they did. And it shows you the correct answers they got and the incorrect answers that they got. And it tells you how much time they sent, spent on that lesson. You can review the results as questions answered incorrectly for each domain or just as a skill in general as like the whole geometry band or each individual standard in there. 
and does the same thing for reading. It's the exact same way for reading. The really cool thing about the reports is that we had all these students in last year and we've continued using it again this year. So all of the data and information that was there from last year when the teachers promoted the kids, the data came with them. And so we can look back over time and give a detailed history of how they've done from our teacher dashboard looking in the different snapshots, the reports, you click on that module and you can see all those things. You can create goals for them and you can even put IEP goals that are on IEPs into this program and it will give them lessons to go with those things as well. You can assign specific skill checkers. You can assign what they call tests, which are mini skill checks for them before and after you start work on a specific standard or skill by going to your test section from your dashboard and then going to the assign tab. You will simply click the student, you'll click the grade level they're in, you get to pick the standard. I chose, we always choose to filter by the standard, but you can do it by the skill also, um, and assign exactly what we want them working on. They can take it in class with you or not, and then it gives you kind of a overall statistic of how the student's been doing with the work that they've been completing. It's really, really, really helpful information. Lots and lots of useful stuff. I won't spend a lot of time on this one because uh, you can see it for yourself and I don't, I'm already over on my time, but it is adaptive, like I said. So based on how they're answering, when they're getting, taking their tests and completing their assignments, it goes up or down based on how they do and then reports that back to you. <clears throat> the lessons are animated. They have a teach me video first, which is usually five to ten minutes. Then it gives them mini practice sets with manipulative questions. It's got pieces they can move and things they can see in videos and clips. And when they answer correctly, they move on automatically to the next one. Um, and then you always have the option to change those lessons, move them around put a lesson back on their plan if you think that they had help or you think that it was a fluke situation like they clicked through really fast and just happened to do well you always have the option from your snapshot screen to go back in and change those anyhow there are a lot of other features that Mobimax has to offer but I have gone over on my time so I will um be happy to share this PowerPoint or answer any questions that I am able but the Mobimax helpline really does a great job of letting uh, answering you and getting back with you so I'll leave you guys with just this one is the last one I really wanted to show is the real time you can see when they log in and what they're working on as it's happening and that's one of the one of my teachers favorite features is because we'll be in class and they want them to do an exit ticket and they want to make sure that they're logged in and working on it before they release them from class you can actually see who's in how long they've been in there and whether or not they're even doing anything so um, anyways it has a lot of things to offer like I said it's a very very useful tool for in the classroom and for a variety of different reasons that many types of teachers will need it so I hope you guys will consider checking it out and hopefully it will help you um, in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.